Hey, what's up everyone? You could probably already tell that this video is going to have something to do with locomotives. And uh, for those that know me, know I have a few locomotives in my collection. So in addition to model railroading, I really love photography. I like taking photographs of my models. And I've been doing that over on my warehouse switching layout for quite some time, which has been great. But uh, I want a little bit of a change in scenery. Now my shelf layout up here is not going to have any scenery on it. So uh, that's strictly for operations, for writing my software. And so I wanted to build something new so that I have something to photograph these things on. So that's what this video will be about. And let's get started. So I'm going to be basing this diorama on an actual prototype location in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I originally came across this based on an article by Cody Grivno of Model Railroader magazine had written an article on small engine facilities and just some modeling ideas. And I really liked this particular location. So I went on Google Maps, I checked it out. Um, I like the layout of it. The track plan, so to speak, is really nice. I'm gonna mostly focus just on the engine facility um, with the sanding tower and some employee parking. Um, I, I just really like the way this building looks. It's simple, it's not too complex. Uh, it'll make a nice little diorama, there's enough parking, so to speak, for uh, locomotives, for photographing them. However, I am going to kind of mirror image this on my diorama, uh, just to do opposite of what reality is here, just kind of flip it on its axis, just because of the way that I feel I want to photograph it. And so the next thing I'm going to do is take some measurements and recreate this in 3D, and so I can get exact measurements for actually creating the mock structure that I want to build uh, before I actually go ahead and build this model. Uh, so we'll get into that next. So here I'm in a program called SketchUp, and I use this a lot for creating 3D models of woodworking projects that I want to work on. I can come in here, I can create the thing I want to create, um, and take exact measurements before I even cut any piece of wood. And in this case, before I actually start building this mock structure. So all the measurements here are based on measurements I took in Google Maps. I ran them through a scale calculator, and then what I can do is now I have exact measurements of the pieces that I need to create in real life in HO scale. So you can see this is three inches. This will be uh, two and three quarter inches tall at this point. So the nice thing about SketchUp is you can take and print these out one to one. So if I come over here, take off the perspective, I can take a look at some of the views and I can actually print this to my printer one-to-one -one, and on the sheet of paper will be it, the exact measurements that I need to cut these pieces out. So I can paste it onto foam core, I can paste it onto cardboard, whatever I need to do, and then I'll have the exact pieces that I need to cut out to actually build my mock structure. Okay, so the main material I'm going to be using for this mock-up is this white foam board that I picked up at the dollar store, and I've been using this for mock-ups for quite a while. Uh, these are 20 inch by 30 inch sheets, they're about 3 eighths of an inch thick, and these are really nice because they're rigid, they're easy to cut. Uh, you can peel the paper off and even use it, uh, use the foam inside for other scenery material if you want. And the extra nice thing about this is that since it's just a paper backing, uh, you can draw extra details on there if you want your mocks to have you know, a little bit extra details. Okay, so here are the printouts from SketchUp. I printed them one to one, meaning one inch in SketchUp is one inch on paper. And just to verify that, um, this should be 44 scale feet wide, which it is, and it should be 20 scale feet tall um, on this side of the building, and it is. So all I have to do is cut this out, paste it onto the foam core, and then I'll have an exact scale uh, replica size of the building that I want to have on my diorama. All the pieces have been cut out. I've got them lightly placed on top of the foam core here, and I'm just going to use this Elmer's washable school glue stick. Uh, goes on purple, dries clear, that sort of stuff. And I'm just going to paste them all on here, let them dry, and then basically cut them all out, and then I'll have exact pieces that I need. And uh, the other thing to take note here is that this is 3 eighths of an inch thick, so I can't just butt them up against each other, otherwise the dimensions will be off. So what I'm going to do is, after these have been cut out, I'm going to flip them over, measure out 3 eighths of an inch, and just make a slice, and then just peel off the foam from the back of this and that way each of the sides will actually sit flush um, with the paper edges once it's all put together. That'll make more sense um, once I uh, show you the end result there. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to
glue these down, and then cut them out. Okay, so I have cut out all the pieces of foam core and taped them together using some clear packing tape. Um, I did that because I didn't want to wait for glue to dry, and it's really not going to be a long-lasting model. It's just a mock-up so I can figure out where I want it to be placed on the diorama. And I also checked to make sure that the clearance was okay. I did have to redo this piece here. I did measure this height wrong, so um, it's a good thing I double-checked. And the other thing um, that I did mention before was that this is three-eighths of an inch thick foam core, and if I didn't slice off three-eighths of an inch on the end, as I had mentioned I was going to do, then I'd have a piece kind of sticking out like this, and then the paper wouldn't, you know, uh, basically wouldn't make a seamless corner here. And so that's why I cut off um, three-eighths of an inch of the foam on the end, or on the back of the paper here. Uh, so that just makes it get my accurate dimensions that I want to actually have the final model um, be of. And the other thing that I did just for fun was I just created some corrugated roof just from some uh, some cardboard uh, just because it looks like it and I had some laying around. And so when I'm placing this where I think I want it to be, um, this kind of like almost completed look will help trick my mind into thinking that uh, that it really is a finished model. And so I think it'll help with um, making a final decision on where I want it placed. Uh, so the mock-up's basically done, and then we'll just move on to the next step. Okay, so I've started laying everything out onto the surface here just to figure out how I want things placed. Um, I kind of liking this angle uh, for several reasons. One, it's just it's not exactly straight, so there's some sort of visual interest. But also, uh, the main objective with this diorama is to photograph locomotives. And I like to photograph things to the left. Like, it's just it's the way my brain operates. Um, I visualize things from the left to the right as far as coming and going. Um, that's just sort of the mentality I have um, since I've been photographing anything, really. And so the camera is mostly going to be pointing this way. And so I want to maximize what's shown um, in the viewfinder. And if I angle it slightly like this, rather than keeping it straight, um, I'll have more of the locomotive in view, and that, at least that's my thinking. Um, I, I sacrifice a little bit here as far as space goes, but with the angle that I'll be photographing things at, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference anyway. And also, if I angle this, um, there's going to be sort of like a parking lot back here. Um, if I photograph it this way, I'll have some more of the scenery elements uh, in the foreground on that side. And the building is going to be kind of like a view block anyways at that angle, uh, but I'll at least have more of this kind of in the view as well. Uh, so yeah, this is the I think this is the general placement that I want to have. Really happy with it. This is my stand-in for a sanding tower over here. Uh, there's also going to be a bunch of scenery elements around. Um, it looks like employees typically park around here and around here, so there'll be plenty of uh, space for vehicles to park along in this area as well and then uh, yeah pretty happy with this I'm gonna play with it and let it sit here for a day or two just kind of move things around slightly till I find the angles that I like I'll put the camera down here and just take a look through the viewfinder and see if that's really the angles that I want um, I'll just swap out locomotives and different placements and things like that just to see you know um, what works best for me so that's where I'm at right now I'm just gonna play with this for a little bit um, like I said, over the next couple of days, just to kind of get a feel for it, see if I really like that. The nice thing about having this workbench on, um, or just out here in the middle of the room, and having things like this, is I can just walk around the whole thing and just take a look at different angles and see how um, how I feel about it. So that's where I'm at, and then, um, yeah, we'll just go on, and hopefully I'll find something soon, uh, and then I can start building the, the bench work. Okay, so it's been a little while. I've had this out for about a day or so. And I've moved things around just a little bit here and there. I do like the angle that it's at. Um, I've looked through my camera lens in this angle and this angle and a couple other ways. And I, I think I like this arrangement the best at the moment. And so I'm going to go with this. I also marked out how wide and uh, I want this module to be. So it's going to be 44 inches wide, uh, 22 inches deep. And I've already started marking out uh, with tape where the structure is going to go. Um, I marked where the track is going to start and end, just so that when I start cutting up uh, the plywood for the base, 
Um, I'll know exactly where to place things, and so I can measure all that out. Uh, so yeah, pretty excited about this. I'm just looking forward to starting it. Next thing is to create the base. So I gotta go to the uh, home store, pick up some wood. Um, I do have some plywood already, so I'm all set there. And then it's just time to turn on the table saw and start cutting. <laughs> all right, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this so far, and I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of this build with you. And thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.